Yeah. You're wasting your time. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're wasting your time. So, bro, I just want to say this. Look. Yeah. You're, you're, so your, your point about revelation. The problem is, right? If the Quran claims to be revelation, so revelation is a in a foreseeing of a future event, right? You know that's that's what. So revelation is a foreseeing of a future event. So what if Allah is going to bring revelation to you? He'll tell you something that hasn't happened yet. That's what revelation is. So what else will be revelation? Right. Also reminding the past events. To, to, to learn from them, to take from, to take lessons from them. Right, but was Jesus born hundred years before Muhammad? So, so what? Yeah, but the fact is, then people would have known about a virgin birth centuries before Muhammad was born. But I think, you know what, you're trying to be technical on the word, meaning of the word. People know about Noah's Ark at the time of Jesus. Why was he mentioning them about Noah's Ark? Or people mentioning in the Bible about Noah's Ark? People already know about Because the Bible is progressive revelation. We don't call it full revelation from Allah. You believe it's revelation from Allah. There's a difference between the Bible and the Quran, it says. Do you believe that the Quran was sent down by Allah? Yeah. Well, we don't believe that. We believe the, the, the Bible is inspired by God. But men have wrote the Bible. We understand that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We believe Injil was also sent by God. Right. So what was the Injil, by the way? Can I ask you that? Injil was a scripture given to Isa Alayhi Salaam, Jesus. Right, and where can we find a copy of that scripture? You can't. It was, it was corrupted and changed over time. Does the Quran ever say that it's been corrupted? It says. Where? I, I don't know exactly. Exact, exact can you show me where? Can anybody show me there? Because that's important. If you're going to claim it's corrupted, where was it corrupted? And also a question I want to ask you, if it was corrupted, why did, is it during Muhammad's time, by the way, that Muhammad tells the Jews and Christians they have nothing to stand upon unless they read the scripture that was before them. That's chapter 5, verse 68. Yeah, I'll speak so. So during Muhammad's time, he says that th this book, so the Injil, well, the Injil, I've got my phone, by the way, it was, it was given to Esau, and it's still in possession of the Jews during their time, during the 7th century. So if Jesus had it, and remember, Jesus was hundreds of years before Muhammad, then it's obvious that Injil was still in people's hands during Muhammad's time. But the, the Quran says that. I'll, I'll, I'll read it to you. So this is Surah 5, verse 68, right? So this is a translation, but I'll just read it out. Our people of the scripture. It's a Quran translation. Yeah. Our people of the scripture, you are standing on nothing until you uphold the law of the Torah, the gospel, and what has been revealed to you from your Lord, the Quran. And that which has been revealed to you from your Lord will surely increase many of them in transgression and belief. So what, what, is my, what is Allah saying? He's saying clearly that you have nothing to stand on as a Christian unless you uphold the Torah and the Gospel. But you're telling me the Torah and the Gospel are corrupt. Now either Allah's lying and there's a still a Torah and the Gospel or you're lying. What was, what was the verse again please? It was Surah 5 verse 68. <laughs> And you'll find this in many other passages, by the way. It's clearly saying that, for example, Moses had a book, right? That was the, the, the Torah, right? Moses clearly had that because it says in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 40, no, no, chapter 2, verse 40 to 44, it clearly states that Moses was given a book. Now, it doesn't claim that that book was the, the Torah. Yeah, it doesn't claim the book was the Torah, but it was the Torah. Right? So if Moses was given that book, it makes no sense because obviously, Allah is clear. No one can change his words, according to chapter 15. But if no one can change his words, then they can't be corrupted. If they're not corrupted, then the Bible I have is the Torah in the Jew, my friend. Other than that, or... It doesn't say no one changes words. It does say that. It doesn't say just Quran. So bring up the verse. Does it say just Quran? Bring up the verse. Allah says nobody changes words. He didn't say anything about Quran. He said nobody changes words. Quran means revelation. He didn't say that. He said no one changes my words or recitation.
about the preservation of plant life. Not takes the responsibility on himself. Right? Over the chapter. Sorry. Not takes the responsibility of preserving the plant. What was chapter? No, don't, don't worry for now. If you can't find the chapter, that's fine. But I'll, I'll give you that. What, what we're saying, look. Well, I'm quite sure you have heard this with other people. I, I've heard it with many yeah. other people, but I'm speaking to you because I honestly think you're another soul to save. I'm here. I'm here to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ, who actually died for your sins, who does love you. I want to ask you another question. Does Allah love you? He does. How does He show He loves you? How does He show He loves you? How, how, how has He shown He loves you? But, but you but no offense bro. But no offense, he gives also the unbelievers food, he gives them drink, he gives them shelter. So why does he love you more than them? When he even though he says in the Quran he hates the unbelievers. There's no point of like uh uh, rating ourselves like he's loving us more uh, no he says he hates the unbelievers that's what he says in the Quran chapter 8 verse 55 he says he hates the unbelievers uh -huh. but why is he giving unbelievers more money than you and in fact more money than an Israeli girl who's a Muslim reason, who's starving to death yeah, the reason is this this world is a, is a, is a paradise for this believer. yeah that's the reason why he's providing to each and every one but he doesn't say that in the Quran he doesn't say it's a paradise it's for unbelievers it's not in the Quran it's, it's, in, the, it's in the Hadith right I mean, uh, I mean, and even yeah, says that world, world is world is a paradise for this believer and a prison cell for the believer. So you're saying that Allah, who you're saying loves you, has decided to put you in prison and to torture Muslim women in countries where, where there's many Shia, by the way, killing Sunnis. You think that Allah loves you? Brother, that is separate, brother. You, you are How is it separate? If Allah loves, if Allah loves you, brother, but if Allah loves you, could He save you from being attacked by jihadis? If Allah loves you, can he save you from being attacked by jihadis? Well, I, I don't understand so if a terrorist, do you know what a terrorist is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if a terrorist came up to you yeah, and wanted to shoot you, could Allah stop the bullet from going to your head? No, if, it, if it's written in my, in my what do you say? But you said Allah loves you. So if it's written in your story, that's... that's a matter. But again, if that's written in your life, that means that Allah wants you to be a martyr. How is that love? If I love you, I want the best for you. Why would I want you to be dies tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Islam is success to you. If Allah, there's a, there's a verse in the Quran, that if Allah loves you, he's going to test you. Yeah. Even, even Prophet Muhammad, he was best to love Prophet to Allah, even though he had been suffering the whole life. He loses his mother at the age of six. He, he loses his father before he even burned. I don't think that's love. Allah so so if, if my father, right, decided to go and cut my legs, right, and he said to me, it was a test for you, I love you. Could I, should I love him back or should I hate him for that? Has he given yeah, me a good reason to love him? No, but allow me to finish. Has he, given me, has he given me a good reason to love him? He's just cut my legs. Has he given me a good reason to love him? So you're, you're saying I should love my father even, even though he's cut my legs. This enabled me to move or do anything. I should love him even though he's cut my legs. Should I do that? No, you shouldn't. Thank you. But I'm saying that you shouldn't because love Allah because if you die, Allah. If you die for the right. sake of Allah, you go straight to heaven, no matter what you did. Yeah, but Allah calls you to die. Huh? Allah calls you to die. Yeah, exactly. So Allah kills you and then says you died in the sake of him. That doesn't make any sense to me. Not, not kill you. So when Jesus died. Well, but you, you said it was written in his, his, his timeline, didn't you? You said no, it was written in your. If you fight for the sake of Allah and you died, you count as heaven. You count right. as heaven. You go to heaven. If you die for the sake of Allah, well, like, if somebody come and stabs you, that's not fair. No, it's not like, fair. If you fight for Allah in a war and defending Islam and that, and you die, and you die for you, go straight to heaven. But if somebody comes and stabs you, has Allah guided that person to stab you? Well, that wasn't a destiny, brother. That is how you are supposed to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you, like, but you're, you're, not, you're not thinking what I'm saying. Look, if Allah has control over all things, as you Muslims say, right, that means he controls the guy who stabs you. He's allowed you to be stabbed, but he's sending you to heaven because you've been stabbed. Now, make that make sense to me. Allah has intentionally killed you, but he's good, he loves you. But the people who die, so Allah is causing everyone to intentionally to die. So what, what do you think love is? What, what do you think love is? Love is... You, you get want food. somebody... No, 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 what is, what is love? That was my question. What, what is love? love somebody is wants the best for you. Love somebody wants the best for you. Yeah. So if, if I wanted the best for you right now, would it be loving for me to cut your leg off? Yeah. No. Oh, it wouldn't be loving? No. But what if Allah calls me to do that? If Allah, look, no, Allah says he guides who wills and he misguides who he wills. He says that in the Quran. So if, Allah, if, if I had a knife right now and I cut you in the leg, Allah calls me to do it. Is Allah loving? How do you know Allah calls you? You want to do it. You, you are not responsible for your My friend, these are questions you've got to ask yourself. But anyway, look, 
At the end of the day, Christ died for our sins. He rose again on the third day. That's a fact. That's the gospel, right? And we have, we have within ourselves this inclination to do bad, to do evil. What? You say, when you say Jesus died for our sins, what, what particular sins are you talking about? Yeah. The sins in the past, the sins you are going to commit love? in the future? So, so again, what look, exactly? what is what love is the transgressions you commit daily. By the way, you know what a sin is, right? So allow me to finish, right? Don't jump to conclusion, right? So the, the transgressions you commit daily are against God. God's nature is wholly good, meaning he doesn't lie, he doesn't steal, not even a little thing. He doesn't uh, say rude words, doesn't curse, he, honor, he honors his family who would be the holy spirit and the son all right he also doesn't covet he doesn't do any of the things humans do but daily we all sin for example the bible says if you even look at a woman with lust in your heart you've committed adultery all right but god's nature doesn't do that so a sin is basically a transgression of god's divine nature i, I, I don't think you got, you got my question i've answered it my, my question was when you say Jesus died for our sins, so which, what exact sins are you talking about here? The sins you are going to commit in the future, the sins you have already committed in the past life, 18 years old, 20 years old, this is what my question so is. So that's a good question. So the, the assumption in your reasoning there is, well, if, if, if a Christian is forgiven, yeah. he can therefore go and do everything he wants to. But the Bible says we must be born again. So as Christians, we are born again. We turn away from doing transgressions in the past and we instead do that which is the good of the Father in the future. So we don't engage in mass murder after we become a Christian because that wouldn't be christ right? and that wouldn't make us Christian. Do you understand what I'm saying? The inclination to sin goes. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's still there in certain aspects, but mortal sins is gone. But when you say, when you say this, this born again Christians, they don't have, they, they can't sin. What is the motivation? I didn't say they can't sin. I said mortal sins. So, so things like murder, Things like rape, right, intentional rape. These want to be done by a born-again Christian. Okay. Yeah. And one more question. Uh, if there is a, what do you say, a practicing Christian who believes in Jesus, who believes in Jesus, has died for his sin, yeah. this person deliberately commits sins, deliberately commits sins. What happened to this person after he dies? Well, if that person did with sins, they're out of salvation. They've lost it. So, there's some Christians that believe, and I want to say this, there's some Christians believe that a born again Christian can't sin, and I believe that as well. I believe that if you're born again, you cannot commit mass transgressions like murder. But in the Quran, not in the Quran, the Hadith, you mentioned Hadith to me, right? So the Hadith actually says there was a story of a man, right? He murdered a hundred people, yeah, sorry. And then he goes on and he seeks forgiveness. He goes to, to a city and then he, he asks a guy, he asks a monk, can I seek forgiveness? The monk says to him, no, so he then murders the monk. He then goes to a city, but and then he dies just as he goes towards it. That's what the Hadith says, right? So then Allah moved the city closer to him. Now, do you think it's fair for Allah to move the city closer to him and to forgive him for his sins, even though he murdered a hundred people? Well, uh, I don't think this hadith exists. Maybe it's uh, a, it does, okay, so uh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you. It's, uh, maybe it's uh, fabricated or... I, I'm gonna, it's Sahih, it's Sahih, it's Sahih, I'm gonna show you, right? I never heard about this hadith. No, I know you haven't, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up, right? I think you forgot that God is the most forgiven. You forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, it may be forgiven, but is it forgiven to, to Allow somebody to go to heaven who murdered a hundred people. How can I tell he got, who went to heaven? No. Because okay. it says he, it, it says he was forgiven. He killed a hundred okay, people. Okay. Even if he committed thousand yeah. murders, he was and, forgiven. And if he come back to Allah, it's so yeah, Here is Sahih Bukhari, right? right. Sahih Bukhari, right? In yeah. fact, let me just I'm just gonna take bloody it was bloody all right, cool. Yeah. Okay, so that's Sai Bukhari, right? I don't have any. Uh, yeah, I know. I brand. know that story. Yeah. So can I, I read out to you? Well, I know, I know. Can I read out to you? I'll, I'll read it for the camera because I want everybody to know exactly what it's teaching, right? Sai Bukhari, three four seven zero, and you can screenshot if you want, right? The Prophet said, amongst the men of Bani Israel, there was a man who murdered ninety nine persons. Then he set out asking whether his repentance could be accepted or not. He came upon a monk and asked him if his repentance could be accepted. The monk replied in the negative he said no right and so the man killed him so he just killed the man for saying no after killing 99 people right he kept on yeah he kept on asking till a man advised to go to such and such village so he left for it but death overtook him on the way while dying he turned his chest towards that village where he had hoped his repentance would be accepted and so the angels of mercy and the angels of punishment quarreled amongst each uh, themselves regarding him Allah ordered the village towards him, which was going to come closer to him and ordered the village whence he had come to go far away. And then he ordered the angels to measure the distances between his body and the two villages. So he was found to be one span closer to the village. He was going, so he was forgiven. 
he was forgiven for murdering 99 people in cold blood and then killing another man simply because he wanted to go to a village to be forgiven. How is that fair? How is that just? He murdered 100 people in cold blood. If I do that today, God will send me to hell. But your God will send you to heaven if you do things like that. Yeah, yeah, but you forgot, you forgot that Allah is most when he, when he seek repentance. Yeah. Yeah. When he repents. When he stops, if I murder you, will Allah forgive me? No matter what you did, if you come back to Allah, if I murder you, will Allah forgive me? If I, uh, if I murder you, if I murder you, will Allah forgive me? I'd forgive you. Well, no offense, you're not thinking. If I murder you, will Allah forgive me? Huh? If I murder you, will Allah forgive me? Maybe. I'm not God. I'm not God. How would I know? Good day, bro. Yeah. Yeah. If I speak to you, but bro, here's what is that. Have a, have a conversation amongst yourselves. Attention. It's been fun speaking to you lot, but I, I don't think you're getting it. I'm not saying they cannot be forgiven, yeah. but what, I, what I'm saying is you cannot forgive somebody yeah. without putting them through the torment they've, they've, they've issued before you. How, how do you know that's not going to happen? So how first of all, you know if I murder intentionally 100 people, no, sorry, if I murder intentionally 99 people, and then, and then I go, like the Hadith says, to seek forgiveness, right? Yeah. So I'm going to seek forgiveness for already murdering 100. And then I murder the guy who says no to me seeking forgiveness. I'm not looking for forgiveness, bro. Of course not. But then he, he's gone. I'm deciding to murder people because I want to. So, so, so what, if God is know, just... How do you know that? Like, I'm, where did you get this context from? Are you, are no, 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 Chris, no, bro. Are you no, why are you walking are you, are you, are you, are you, Well, I, I can't. This is basic, wait, wait, this is wait, wait, basic wait, wait, language, dude. It's so basic. Are you a Chris, it's basic language. It's so basic, are, are you, dude. Are you, are you, are you, are you, look, it's what it is. Look, love. I'll read out the hadith, yeah? I read that. I listened to that. I know the hadith. Okay, so, Sahib Bukhari. 3470. You're not answering my question. We're done here. It's been blessed. God bless. I killed 100 people. Yeah? I can't be forgiven. What I'm saying is, if you kill 99 people and then you say, I want to seek forgiveness from Allah, then you kill another one person, yeah. you're not asking for forgiveness, my friend. How, how do you know? Uh, 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 where, where do you die? Bro, bro, it's been real. It's been real. Love, love, it's been real. It's been real. It's been real, bro. It's been real. It's been real. Love, love, love. God bless, man. God bless, man. It's been real. It's been real, bro. It's been real. What's the truth? What's going on? Oh, so basically, look, I've made it very intentionally clear, right? If a person intentionally wanted forgiveness, right, they would seek forgiveness, right? That's, that's fine. If a person wanted him... Yeah, if a person wanted to seek forgiveness, they wouldn't go on to further murder somebody after, seek, after seeking forgiveness for murder. That makes no sense. That's like me saying, oh, God, forgive me for rape, and then I go out the next day and rape. That makes no logical sense. This is why Islam is deficient in mind. So when they bring the argument, oh, a born-again believer can sin, I simply say, no, a born-again believer cannot sin. A born-again believer will be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Can we commit meaningless sins or minor sins? Yes, but mortal sins, no. Because a born-again believer wouldn't do that. Right? But in Islam, you can murder as much people as you want and Allah will bring the village closer to you so you can receive repentance because Allah is most merciful and loving. Do you know the name of that village or is that a fairy tale story? It's a fairy tale story, come on, I don't believe in Hadith. <laughs> <laughs> bro, 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 there's nothing there's not more to say, bro. I, I, would, I would explain it to you. You haven't got it? No, but let's have a discussion at least about it. Bro. You haven't got it though, dude. No, no, it's not about having to go. You I haven't got it. I understood everything you know. I you, knew about you Hadith know. before you talked. That, that's that. fine, but you haven't understand what I stood. The, what I said. Okay, I was, I'll say what I've understood from what you said. Okay. The point you're making is because someone, because someone has killed a hundred people. No. Right? Because they're traveling towards the village to seek forgiveness. Ninety-nine they, people. Yeah, they killed a hundred. Okay, ninety-nine people. They killed one. Was it ninety-nine people in general? So, so remember what I read to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, so, yeah. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. So he killed I'm nine. I'm you, this is what I mean. You're not listening. I'm not, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting my time, dude. I'm not. So I'm not here. I've got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. So you, you, you're, not, you're not mentally efficient enough to deal with this logic, dude. This logic is beyond you. Yeah, I'm not talking to you, bro. I'm not talking to you. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. What, so what? So what would you say if he doesn't get it? The fact is, he doesn't get the fact that, look, as I explained before, if I intentionally murder 99 people, as the Hadith says, and then I go ahead and seek forgiveness, and then I ask someone for forgiveness, and he says no, and then I murder him, I'm not looking for forgiveness. If I go and rape 100 women, and then I go, and then I go to seek forgiveness from one other woman, and then I rape her, I'm not seeking forgiveness because I haven't understood the, the probability of my crime. I haven't understood the problem of it. There's no problem with it. This is the problem with Islam. In Islam, you can commit a manifold of sins and you can be forgiven. In Christianity, you can't. Yeah, you're right. You, you just told me to F off and all sorts of stuff. So here's what it is. It's all love, bro. It's all, you're right. It's all love. You can, you can kill 100 people 
Oh, okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Is that why your, your prophet murdered hundreds of thousands of people and raped children? I don't, I don't know. Because he was the biggest I, sinner. I have, I have no idea. What would you do what he did? Yeah, we say, would you Would you do I what no, Muhammad did? I, no, I have no idea what you're bringing up. You're bringing up Amy, you're wasting right. your time. He's not going to listen. You're bringing up random stuff in Islam. You can kill as many people as you want. Okay, thank you. There you go. There you go. That's why. That's why Islam is a religion of lawlessness. You heard it from yourself. You can kill as many people and be forgiven because their prophet was a murderer, a pedophile, a rapist, a robber, and anything goes. And that's his love for you, and the guy admitted it himself.